This PC is ridiculously tiny. Like, it's, it's not much bigger than my ear. It can easily fit in my jacket pocket versus something like a Steam Deck, which absolutely dwarfs this thing. Uh, technically portable, I guess, but like, yeah, having a little bit more issues there. I've reviewed other mini PCs on the channel, but even something like the Minis Forum uh, PC here that it's actually pretty tiny in its own right, I mean, uh, but just absolutely dwarfs this thing. You could probably fit four of these inside of one of those. Although in this video, we'll be looking at the trade-offs of, uh, you know, it's tiny, but there's, you know, definitely you, you have to cut something, right? So uh, in this, we have an Intel J4125 quad core processor at 2.3 gigahertz. Uh, you've got dual band Wi-Fi. You've got up to eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory, which is, I believe, what we do have in here, uh, up to a terabyte SSD. Um, and then you have four USB ports. Three of them are USB 3.0. One of them is USB 2.0. You have an HDMI 2.0 port. Um, you do get, like I said, the SSD, but you also get a micro SD expansion port. You get an audio jack. Um, anyway, I want to figure out a couple things. First of all, is it good enough for just general purpose use? A lot, honestly, what a lot of people do with their PCs these days, you just need to be able to run Chrome, basically, right? Uh, and then the other thing is, can it game? Now, obviously, we're going to need to draw back our expectations, even compared to something like a, a standard mini PC. Um, for something that's of this size, right? But that doesn't mean that there might not be some games we could do on this. And since my channel's channel, my channel, uh, since my channel is primarily gaming PC focused, we will definitely be primarily looking at can you actually game on this thing? Uh, and then maybe some final thoughts about like the trade-off between the size of a you know desktop PC versus a mini PC versus something like this tiny Pico PC. Okay, I've got to say my first impressions while just installing games, running Windows updates, etc., getting ready to do the actual review has been fairly negative. So we can see that the four core, four thread processor we've got going on here at two gigahertz is absolutely maxed out uh, while installing games. And then let's say I wanted to like change my display resolution. So I right click, click display settings, and notice there's this noticeable wait time before even that menu loads up. And I was, you know, just checking that we could run uh, uh, at, at 120 FPS, all of that. Anyway, um, so the point is, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what to expect when we get to the gaming test. So this is a four core, four thread processor with a 10 watt TDP, a two gigahertz frequency with a 2.7 gigahertz base. You can see that we are currently, uh, because we've been running for a while here, just flatlined at about that two gigahertz. All right, uh, when did this thing come out? We're currently in end of life status. It was a November 4th, 2019 chip. Uh, launch price at 107, but again, this is kind of an older chip at this point, so. Anyway, that's what we're working with here, along with, uh, we do have eight gigabytes of memory. If we sp uh, switch over to memory here, it looks like we're running at uh, 2133 megahertz. So anyway, that's what we're at here. So just rein in expectations performance wise, because my uh, multitasking, uh, just desktop use, downloading things in the background stress test here feels pretty sluggish, unfortunately. Well, I thought I'd start out with Slay the Spire for a gaming test since it's not very ambitious and we're currently running the game at 1080p and running it unlocked on a uh, no vSync just to kind of see how far it can go. It's not looking like it can go super far. I just started up a run um, uh, to kind of test this thing out. Not going to really pay attention to what we're doing exactly. Let's just move on. But this is an old 2D turn-based card game. I love playing this on my Steam Deck, but the Steam Deck has absolutely no issues maxing this thing out at 90 FPS uh, with, with headroom to spare. Uh, now, the good news is here is, you know, a game like this is certainly playable under 30 frames per second. The bad news is we are certainly dipping under 30 frames per second at times if you take a look at the frame time graph here, and the GPU is pretty much running maxed out uh, according to the MSI Afterburner stats here. Um, there's definitely audible fan noise. Currently, we're running the, the little mini PC sitting on the desk right over here. Um, just kind of kind of sitting down there. And my my microphone is, is kind of sitting right here. So it's kind of just across the TV length distance from there, if you hear any fan noise in the background. So I certainly can play Slay the Spire um, on this device, but the performance 
is concerning, not that this type of game is unplayable, but just that as we try to do something a little bit more ambitious, I'm a little bit worried about what sort of results we might get. Speaking of which, let's pop in another game. All right, I figured out, uh, you know, figured we'll try Hades next. Now, uh, settings-wise, uh, normally I wouldn't even think too much about it, but on this device, I think we're gonna go 720p. And I don't think there's a lot else to change in the graphic settings, to be honest. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna pretty much go with it and see if we can play this game at 720p. And uh, hope for the best, the menu itself wasn't exactly running at a high frame rate. And we are currently only in the house segment of the game and we're running in the 20s. That's not a great sign. Um, just for context, when I play this game on my Steam Deck, it runs at a locked 90 frames per second with basic... I, I don't think I've ever seen it dip below that. And it does that, um, you know, with headroom to spare. So, I... Uh, Man, this is not uh, giving me super confidence for let's get into any actual combat and see what happens. But I was really hoping that these kind of 2D style games uh, would run with absolutely no issue. These are games like that I absolutely love on my Steam Deck. And uh, you know what? Oh, this is probably not going to be playable. We're already down to uh, 25 frames per second uh, in combat here. Um... Well, so I'm not saying you couldn't play the game, but I am saying I don't think you'd want to, and as you get into harder fights, wow, this feels extremely unresponsive. So that is a huge disappointment. I was hoping um, that on little 2D games like this, we could at least lock to um, 30 frames per second. Honestly, I was hopeful for 60, but man, I am barely able to even move around here. I just died, apparently, because I'm having trouble avoiding traps. Um, so good thing, thing we have Death Defiance, but considering these were going to be the easy games on my, on my list <laughs> uh, that I figured we'd have no issues with, and on other mini PCs I've tested I had no issues with, uh, we're off to a bit of a rough start here. Um, well, anyway, let's go ahead and continue moving on with testing. All right, we might have had some success finding something that's working well here. We are on Portal 2, and I do have the game running at a mostly locked-ish sort of uh, <laughs> uh, 60 frames per second. We do see uh, dips and uh, a little bit below that in frame time spikes on, on fast uh, camera turns. Now, the settings we had to use to get here, we are at 720p resolution and basically everything turned as low as it goes. So we're certainly not getting a beautiful looking experience, but we are getting a 60 frames per second-ish experience. But again, there are some stutters as we kind of look around quickly, uh, that sort of thing. So anyway, it's not a um, flawless 60 FPS, but we did find a good game that is playable at, at a nice uh, locked 60 frames per second. So we do at least have uh, evidence that you can game on this thing <laughs> if you do select the correct game mode, uh, or game, I guess, not game mode, and, and settings. So anyway, there's that. Let's go ahead and try something else. All right, I've loaded up Dave the Diver to try something recent that is hopefully not too demanding. However, uh, we're below 10 frames per second currently. So uh, I'm going to try to do a dive. Also, I want to mention that the uh, the load times have not been incredibly quick on this machine. So I'm actually going to show the time loading into the game as well as the actual performance in the game. Um, I This is my first time loading into Dave the Diver on this system. I didn't do any off camera. So we'll, we'll see how, uh, how we do. Um, so, yeah, it's looking like we're around 11 frames per second. So that is certainly not excellent. And despite this being a fairly slow-paced game, um, it's going to be difficult to play. I mean, I, I know you've got to have a certain set of standards for this type of game. Um, now, we are currently at 1080p. Why don't we try dropping down to 720p, perhaps? 
and see if that does anything for us. Okay, that's at least getting us to uh, 22 frames per second. So that feels at least somewhat playable for this style of game. Obviously still not ideal, but we're at least um, in the realm of like, I think I could play this. All right, I have loaded up Brotato. Brotato is another game that I like quite a bit on my Steam Deck. Not gonna really think about what we're doing here. I'm just gonna, uh, you know, go to the next wave or whatever. Uh, so, uh, roguelite 2D game, uh, similar to Vampire Survivors, that type of a game where you just kind of move around with one joystick and your weapons auto fire. And it looks like we're hitting uh, kind of in the 40s. Um, and these are certainly the early rounds, so it's very possible that we could get uh, more demanding stuff uh, the, the later we go here. Uh, and it can feel at least slightly stuttery at times. Um, I'm going to not worry too much about what we're choosing here and just kind of do the next wave. Uh, but this at least feels very, very playable. So um, that's good at least. <laughs> We did find a nice little 2D game here to play, so it's looking like, you know, if you find the right games, there is certainly some fun to be had on this little mini PC. Last thing I want to mention is, even when not playing games, uh, you can hear the fans are still pretty much running full blast, uh, even when I'm just like playing a YouTube video here. And uh, you can see the GPU usage is up here uh, pretty high. Uh, so is the CPU usage, even again, just having one Chrome tab open playing a 1080p uh, YouTube video. Now, if I try to uh, even like like hop into full screen, you'll notice there's a bit of a delay to that. Um, and uh, I don't know, guys, it just this overall experience just feels pretty sluggish, even when we're not gaming, but obviously, especially when we are gaming. Popping out for some final thoughts, I'm leaving the PC running in the background here, and right now it's just on the desktop, and it is still blasting its fans audibly to where I can hear it right now. I don't know how much if that's picking up uh, in the camera or anything like that, so just realize when you're looking at a PC this tiny, and this thing is absolutely tiny, and I do think it's a cool design, has a lot of in-out available on it, that kind of stuff. Um, but it is, uh, you know, it, there's, there's audible fan noise and it is not super powerful. I've got to say overall, I was hoping for a bit more performance in this thing, especially for just general desktop usage, because um, just, yes, you can obviously use a web browser and whatnot on this thing, but it just felt sluggish uh, compared to what I'm used to. And I, and I don't feel like it's asking a lot, for just general desktop uh, usage to not feel sluggish, right? Then when we get into the gaming performance, again, could we find some games we could play? Sure. Uh, I couldn't get Cyberpunk to boot, not that I was expecting it to run more than a frame or, or two per second anyway, uh, but even looking at the games, you know, 2D games like Slay the Spire, I was really hoping for more out of that. Um, you know, Hades, things like that. And again, there's other mini PCs out there that granted they are bigger and they are more expensive. And this thing is tiny and it's not that expensive. Uh, but if you could, uh, you know, think about what, what were you, what are you thinking about buying this device for, right? Does it need to be this small? If it doesn't need to be this small, right? If it could be small, but not this small, I think you could get a lot more power uh, to do a lot more. But if you have a specific task in mind for this device and it needs to be this tiny and you are sure that this, uh, you know, several year old Celeron processor with integrated UHD 600 graphics, if, if, that those can meet your needs. If, if, if you have, you know, a specific purpose for this device, then maybe go ahead and, and you know, take a look at this thing. But again, just realize just in general, it, you're going to be... Um, really limiting yourself to get this form factor. And so make sure that that is something that you absolutely need, is that form factor before putting your money down on something like this. Because again, if you look at other mini PCs like my Minis Forum, uh, UM780, whatever the heck it is, <laughs> uh, I can I forget the name, uh, uh, 780 XTX, right? Uh, anyway. Uh, you know, something like that can actually run games like Cyberpunk. Like, it, it is actually pretty powerful. Even something like a Steam Deck, uh, you know, that is, you know, coming with a screen and more gaming, gaming performance. You could even dock it and use it as a Linux PC. 
So I'm just saying, uh, you know, th think of hard about what you're trying to get out of a device like this. Um, because, yeah, even just the general uh, desktop experience was fa fairly sluggish. But anyway, I still think it's a cool overall design and how tiny it is and everything like that. So, so let me know in the comment section if you can think of a use for something like this. Um, uh, cause you know, maybe I'm just missing something, but, uh, anyway, uh, huge thank you to channel subscribers and especially channel members who have clicked the join button to directly, f uh, support the channel financially. That is amazing. You're all beautiful people and I hope everyone has an excellent day.